Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the start of a little something I like to call Vita Week. This week on the channel is dedicated to the PlayStation Vita, and to show that dedication, we are going to be getting the Platinum Trophies and covering a bunch of different games this week, with the first being the very forgotten and deviously hard Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. Released in 2012 and published by Activision for the PS Vita, Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified was developed by game studio Instigate Games. Yeah, not your usual developers. Much like other Call of Duties you will find the modes we've all come to know and love. It's got a single player campaign, classic Call of Duty multiplayer which is surprisingly still active, but beware, expect hackers. And we also get some side modes like the Hostiles mode which is essentially like survival from the original Modern Warfare 3. And we've got all of that to come so sit back and relax and join me as we get the Platinum Trophy for Black Ops Declassified on the PS Vita. Enjoy. So to start things off, we're going to focus on the campaign and its two separate modes. Yes, this campaign has two modes, time trials and operations. Time trials are exactly what they sound like, except they also, in a way, act as the game's tutorial by introducing you to some of the different mechanics and such that you'll see throughout the game. But of course, our main focus here are the two trophies for completing all of the levels and getting a three-star rating by getting an absolutely ridiculously quick time in all five of the different levels. And then we have operations, which which is more of your traditional Call of Duty campaign experience. It consists of 10 levels which are all relatively short to complete, with most taking between 3 to 6 minutes max. Which sounds good right? Well there are some caveats to this however, but we'll get into those shortly. Starting off with the time trials, now it's worth mentioning that at the time this is when I was actually playing it on my Vita rather than the Vita TV using a controller, so I don't know if this affected it in any way, but these damn time trials are so much more difficult than they need to be. Aiming can be a bit janky, I find it likes to jitter around a lot leading you to missing targets, you literally have to have an insanely perfect run to be able to beat these times needed for 3 star, at least that's how it felt to me. Granted I could have just been slow, but I was always a second or two off and it was just getting more and more difficult trying to find moments where I could save time. Of course we do manage to get it done but let it be known that it took me like an hour total to get three stars in all of these, bearing in mind I think all of these require a time somewhere less than a minute long, so safe to say I was pulling my hair out for a little while. Now I did initially have issues when recording footage directly from the Vita. Obviously this is something you're not supposed to be able to do, so issues are expected. Now even though you faintly hear the trophy pops, you don't see them. Not sure why, but it only happens for these two trophies before I noticed and moved over to the Vita TV, which I then used to finish the rest of the game and have since had no issues at all. So yeah, we get both of them, but you don't see them pop. Apologies. Now with the time trials out of the way, we can move on to the operations. Now as I said earlier, these operations consist of 10 different missions, all relatively short in terms of time to complete, with most being 3-6 to six minutes long. And we get to play as everybody's favourite Vietnam vet Frank Woods, as well as your boy Alex Mason. Now as I said, although the missions are short, there is a caveat and that is that no matter what difficulty you're on, if you die, you have to restart the whole level again. Yep, there are no checkpoints in this game, which is always fun. Now, I'm saving Veteran for later, as I genuinely have no idea of the difficulty of this game, and have decided to instead work my way through the missions, getting as many of the different combat and mission-related trophies as I can along the way. Any that I've missed, I'll just do in cleanup. Our first trophy, Can't Beat Fresh Meat, comes from literally just starting the operations mode. Our first operation is checking out, and we play as Frank Woods in the streets of Vietnam with our objective being to find and arm explosive on all three of the parable machines, whatever they are. Now as we get into the gameplay it became very quickly apparent just how accurate the enemy AI were even on regular difficulty, and what makes this worse is something that everyone is referring to as a stopping power mechanic. Basically if you're under fire and getting hit it practically makes it impossible to get an accurate shot back as you're continuously jerked up and down. That's what she said. <laughs> and the enemies tend to be relentless when it comes to shooting you. It's just a constant hail of bullets every time you show your face. Not fun at all. Now this first mission doesn't have any missable trophies here, but we were able to knock out a few miscellaneous ones. The first being the headbanger trophy for performing 10 headshots. And then we unlocked the parking violation trophy for destroying a total of 20 cars. Now I also think that the trophy was bugged, as granted I had died a couple of times so I did manage to get a few extra cars destroyed, but there was no way on earth I destroyed 20 cars at this point. 
A few more trophies now out of the way, we proceeded to plant the explosives and make our escape. Our next mission is air traffic control and our objective here is to make our way through a facility and rescue the groups of CIA analysts held hostage inside. Quite a short mission in all honesty and there is a missable trophy we can obtain here towards the end of the level which is for killing three enemies while using the mortar strike. And even though I was positive I'd done it, I didn't get the trophy, however we do manage to nab a few more combat related trophies throughout. The first being the cut and run trophy for knifing five enemies in a row. and the second being the bang for your buck trophy for killing four enemies with a single grenade. And we also unlock one of the very few story related trophies for completing the mission. Our next mission was Active Measures and here we take a bit of a break from Woods and we get to play as our boy Alex Mason. The mission starts with us on our way to meet up with someone in East Berlin who has some intelligence on enemy operations. Unfortunately he takes a bullet to the head courtesy of a sniper and we then have to grab the intel and fight our way to our escape car. Now during this mission there is a missable trophy that I managed to earn and that is the Not Afraid of the Dark trophy which requires us to complete the mission without using night vision goggles. Now the level isn't actually that dark anyway so you don't even really need them. It was relatively easy, there is a decent amount of enemies but nothing we can't handle and after fighting our way to our escape car we finish the mission and unlock the trophy. Our next operation was Got Your Back and our objective here was to make our way through an area in West Berlin to track and interrogate a Russian soldier named Colonel Belov. The whole capture and interrogate part of the mission doesn't actually go according to plan. Thankfully killing Belov wasn't an issue as we were able to retrieve some classified intel from some of his guards earlier in the mission. Now this mission also has a missable trophy that we can obtain by simply completing the mission using only a handgun. Can't lie, I was a bit confused at first because we weren't given a handgun and instead was given a scorpion and I was under the impression that this was an SMG. Turns out though I'm apparently wrong and we managed to unlock the sound of one hand capping trophy for using only that weapon throughout the mission. Next up was Operation Three Point Landing and we are back as Woods with the objective of making our way through a Russian facility to find and eliminate Adolf Shruzel, who is believed to be reviving Project Nova. Quite a lot of enemies are thrown at us during this mission and there is a missable trophy we can get here, however we failed to get it this time around so I'll have to come back and clean up. For now though we find and kill Shruzel and make our escape. Still in Russia, our next operation, Rocket's Red Glare, finds us in its snowy mountains. We are again woods and have been sent to locate and destroy the multiple ICBMs located at the Russian facility. Definitely one of the longer missions in the game and has one of the most ridiculously annoying to get trophies, and that was for completing the mission without taking any damage, and as I said earlier, the AI in this game is accurate, and at times can be pretty relentless when it comes to laying down fire on you. Of course, as expected, we failed this pretty quickly, but never fear, we did unlock another missable trophy that this mission has, and that is for picking up the ballistic knife and using it to kill 10 enemies. But oddly enough, it isn't by actually shooting the knife at anyone, we just need to melee them. Doing so though, nabs us the going ballistic trophy. Continuing as Woods, our next operation was self-destructive and we needed to make our way through another Russian facility in search of a captured agent. Things at this facility isn't as it seems though and we come to realise that this is ground zero for the Project Nova revival. We also find the agent we were looking for, however we were too late and discover the Russians had unfortunately killed him. This leads Woods to decide that he is going to blow up the entire facility and we find ourselves fighting our way out of the base before the bombs detonate. We do die a couple of times here, but this did give me the opportunity to get a missable trophy, and that was for planting the C4 on the reactors in less than 60 seconds. There are also another two missable trophies that we can get here, both of which need to be earned separately, and they both involve killing the scientists in this level in specific ways, but unfortunately I never managed to get them this time round. Our next operation was Ops MIA, and our job was to use our sniper to protect and escort an operative who had been taken prisoner to safety. The mission is again incredibly short and has a whopping three miscellaneous trophies we can unlock, one of them being pretty much completely RNG, and that's for killing eight enemies with four bullets. The other two are much 
easier, one which involves getting 100% accuracy, which we unfortunately don't manage to get this time around. But I did ensure to pick up the 357 Magnum off of the table and pop 10 enemies in the head with it for the Crack Shop trophy. Next up was Operation Escort Service, and we find ourselves in Afghanistan on a rescue mission for another captured operative, which we will then have to escort to safety. Another one of the longer missions in the game drawn out by the times we have to survive against a few waves of enemies, and due to the sheer amount that was there, it made it pretty annoying to get through even on regular difficulty. It was also made harder by the fact that we were going for another missable trophy, that being the Conservative Values Trophy for completing the mission without reloading. A bit more annoying than you might think, and not only really saved by the fact Fact that there are a bunch of weapons to choose from at spawn. Most, if not all of the enemies use AK-47s and if I'm already carrying one, I can't just swap it out. So I spent this mission carefully placing shots, trying to get as many headshots as possible and only firing one bullet at a time as to not waste any ammo and be left in a bad situation. Thankfully we managed to get this done first try and unlock the trophy. This brings us to our next and final operation, that being Hostile Takeover. This operation has us playing as neither Woods or Mason and instead an unnamed CIA operative. We find ourselves infiltrating a drug compound run by the cartel with our objective being to kill the two cartel leaders that are currently here. One of these being Jose Menendez, father of Raul Menendez who you may recognise from Black Ops 2. Now along with the familiar faces, this mission also contains a good number of missable trophies that we can unlock, three of which we managed to get this first time going through. Now throughout the entire level we can find numerous stacks of cocaine and there's more than enough to both shoot and knife 10 stacks of the stuff both of which come with their own trophies for doing so. The other two missable trophies are related to the two cartel leaders, with the one that we achieved this time round for shooting both Torres and Menendez in the head. And it wasn't long before we finished the operation, unlocking the three previous trophies and the Bean Around the Block trophy for completing all of the operations on any difficulty. With the campaign now completed, it was of course time to return to the campaign. <laughs> This time my goal was to replay any of the missions where I was missing specific trophies and to also unlock the remaining combat related ones. Our first stop was the air traffic control operation to use the mortar strike at the end of the mission to kill the three enemies on the runway. Doing so nabs us the sky is mauling trophy. Next up was the three point landing operation and for this trophy we needed to pick up all of the RPGs we can find scattered around the level and use the limited amount of rockets we do have to kill a total of 15 enemies. Unfortunately this is one of those trophies that we won't unlock until the mission is completed but thankfully we managed to pull it off first time around and unlock the bang up job trophy. Our next trophy was the Pure as the Driven Snow trophy for completing the Operation Rocket's Red Glare without taking damage. This is ridiculously difficult to pull off. Even though the spawn points in the pass they take tend to stay the same each time, there are a lot of enemies, all with insane accuracy and a lot of the time like to pre-fire at you before you even walk around the corner. This took me a fair amount of time and a fair few tries. This was honestly not fun to do at all. Fucking joke on me. That is complete bollocks. I don't know how long this is going to take, but this is actually ridiculous. Choke.
think that might be it. I think that's all of the guys. Yes. Whew, that took me so long, man. So long. Thank God that's over and done with. I'm saying that. I haven't got the trophy yet. Please. I don't want to go through that again. Yes, pure as the driven snow. Whew, that was difficult. Right, our next operation, we're back on Ops MIA, and we are going for the two missable trophies here. The first for completing the mission with 100% accuracy, which is honestly really easy, as long as you just take your time and line up your shots. And being the perfect shot manages to nab us the Waste Not Want Not trophy. The next trophy was a bit more difficult, but still managed to pull off fairly quickly. Somehow. The double down trophy requires us to kill 8 enemies with 4 or fewer bullets. We can't shoot a car to get it to explode, we can't use the RPG, it has to be from our sniper. So this means we was going to have to get collateral shots. Now while I managed to learn the enemy spawns and paths pretty quickly, and managed to spot a few opportunities that I had to pull this off, this didn't change the fact that it really is just pure RNG. Sometimes enemies may not be in the place they should be, sometimes they'll stop or move in a certain way while taking their path, and then of course there is always human error and just getting down the timings. For a couple of these chances, they are rather generous and you get a good few seconds to really line up your shot, but for the rest you have literally less than a second to pull the trigger and get the collateral. It's definitely one of the tougher trophies, if not the toughest trophy in the game, backed by the fact that it is actually the rarest trophy with a mere 1.1% of players that have earned it, and with only 1% actually getting the platinum anyway, this trophy is definitely the deciding factor in that. Thankfully, but after numerous attempts, we managed to unlock the trophy. Come on, last double kill, come on. Please just stand in front of each other. There we go, that should be it, that should be it. I'm so happy right now. Let's just protect him, get this over and done with. There we go, hurry up and get to that extraction point, mate. Hurry up. Whew. Yeah, I definitely have earned it. Definitely. Come on, trophy. Yes! Double down. Get in. I was so worried I weren't going to get that. We then loaded up the Operation Self-Destructive with the goal of unlocking its two missable trophies, as well as two combat trophies. One a bit trickier than the other to legitimately pull off, but was made easier thanks to a little trick that we can make use of. The first trophy we went for was the troglodyte trophy for killing all three scientists that we can find on the level with headshots. Relatively easy and upon completing the mission, we unlocked the trophy. During that I also managed to use my Semtex and stick a total of five enemies, killing them with it and unlocking the stick it to the man trophy. Back to the scientists, the next trophy we unlocked was for killing two scientists with a single grenade, and that gets us the Doctorate in Thermodynamics trophy. The next trophy, attempting to do legitly, is quite difficult. I tried multiple times throughout the story and throughout the previous operations during cleanup, and was just still unable to unlock it. Basically, what we need to do is kill 10 enemies in less than 5 seconds. Thankfully, using the self-destructive operation, we are able to cheese this trophy. Basically, we fight our way through the facility and plant the C4. After which, we get a timer before detonation, and we need to fight our way out in time and escape. Well, instead of fighting our way out, if we just trigger the enemies to spawn and then sit downstairs and wait for the timer to hit zero, the C4 will detonate, killing us, but also all of the enemies on the level. And as this technically counts as me killing them, it nabs us the Extreme Prejudice Trophy. We then loaded up the final mission, this time to kill the cartel member Torres with a melee attack, unlocking the Enthusiasms Trophy. And funnily enough, while going for this trophy, I also unlocked the A Need to Bleed Trophy for meleeing a total of 100 enemies. This leaves us with our final combat related trophy, and that was the Justice is Blind trophy, another deviously hard to get and yet so simple trophy. 
All we needed to do was kill four enemies stunned by a flashbang, something which I had done multiple times already and continue to do multiple times with no luck. I'm not sure if the trophy is buggy in any way as like I said I tried this many times and should have had it completed. We do eventually get it done though but not after wasting a fair bit of time trying to get it to pop. This leaves us with our final three trophies of the game, one of them being the Blood and Guts trophy for earning three stars in each operation. Now in one way I'm thankful that it isn't like the time trials and we don't need to beat a specific time, but in another I hated the fact that we have to go through the game on veteran difficulty. Now I'm no stranger to veteran on a COD game, but with the game being a bit janky in some aspects when it comes to combat and with the AI having pinpoint accuracy along with the stopping power mechanic, this does make it a significant challenge. Again, the 1.4% unlock rate says a lot. Of course, it is thankfully made a bit easier by the fact that the missions are significantly shorter than your typical god game. But remember, if we die, we have to restart the whole mission. There are no checkpoints, so my aim was to just take my time, hiding around every corner I can and taking cover behind everything I can. I wasn't risking anything. I would typically only take pop shots unless I was feeling a bit brave and always kept my distance, although this didn't mean that this was in any way a breeze. Some missions were much easier than others, don't get me wrong, but I was constantly dying due to the sheer amount of damage they do, ridiculous accuracy, the stopping power mechanic, and those slow health regen times. They're a killer. I also noticed on the Ops MIA level that they added a few extra spawn points for enemies which I didn't realise until I had been killed like 5 times and left baffled as to where I was being shot from. Who am I getting shot by? I don't understand who is shooting me. I'm inside a building. How are you curving your bullets over the balcony? Of course, your boy here continued to push through and eventually it was all worth it as we soon unlock the Blood and Guts trophy for completing all operations on Veteran. Let's say you ain't killing me now. This is it. Whew. Come on. Imagine if he just got me right here. There we go. There we go. Kill him. Kill him. He's a target. There we go. That's the veteran done. We should get a trophy now. There we go. Blood and guts. Complete the game on veteran. I was just wondering if it would actually show me what it's for. Um, no, it, it doesn't. Okay. Complete the game on veteran. Nice. With Veteran out of the way, this now leaves us with our final game mode and our final two trophies. This game mode is called Hostiles, which is essentially just a round-based survival against soldiers. Our final trophies we can unlock here are the Hostile Witness Trophy for surviving up to Wave 13 in any of the levels, and the Hostile Work Environment Trophy for earning three stars on each of the five levels. Thankfully, we didn't have to do this on Veteran difficulty and instead only had to kill a specific number of enemies to get three stars. With the first two missions requiring 150 kills, missions 3 to 4 requiring 200 kills, and mission 5 requiring 250 kills. Now I assume this would have been easy, and to be honest for the most part, it should have been. However, I had an issue. I couldn't even get past round 6 because the enemies literally felt like they were on veteran difficulty. A ridiculous amount could spawn at one time and they weren't afraid to rush you while you're in the middle of reloading, leaving you totally defenseless. And with that accuracy and stopping power, we genuinely were. I played for a good hour trying to get the three stars on just the first level until I caved in and looked online for some good spots to sit in to funnel the enemies through, hopefully making it easier. While I didn't find any good spots, I did find out that the difficulty you choose for operations does affect the difficulty of the enemies in hostiles, even though the game literally doesn't tell you anything about this. And seeing as Veteran was the last difficulty I played, it was safe to assume the enemies I was now facing were Veteran as well. Now I didn't think this would work, but I was willing to give anything a try at this point, so I quickly loaded up a mission on regular difficulty, backed out and gave it another attempt. Now look, I'm not saying this is the case and it could be down to pure luck, but I genuinely think that did the trick, as pretty much for the next 5 missions, it was a breeze. Granted, I had a couple of close calls, but it was all honestly so much easier. 
The only issue now was actually knowing how many kills we had in each level, as there's absolutely no way to tell. There's no scoreboard or anything, it just tells you what wave you're on at the start of each one, and the number of enemies in that wave. Now, I wasn't going to start counting every single enemy I killed, so I decided to play it safe and finish each mission at around wave 15-16, which was thankfully, at least for four of the five levels, more than enough. Of course, this did mean that during the first mission, we unlocked the Hostile Witness Trophy for reaching wave 13. For the final level, we were on everybody's favourite map, Nuketown, or what this game likes to call Nuke House, basically just half of the Nuketown map we all know and love. We needed 250 kills, and so to play it safe, I decided to survive up until wave 20, and this actually went quicker than I thought it would. It only took maybe 10 minutes more than the previous levels because the map was significantly smaller in size, making clearing waves a lot quicker. For the most part, I just camped in the upstairs bedroom and waited for the enemies to come to me. And it wasn't long before we had reached round 20, passing the 250 kills needed, getting us our final 3 star needed for the hostile work environment trophy, as well as unlocking the No More Worlds to Conquer Platinum trophy. Okay, we're going to do this final round and then call it there because we should have enough kills by now. I just wanted to make sure because we needed 250 for this one. Which is, uh, and the last one we needed 200 and I cut it pretty fine. And my controls ran out of battery, this might dictate it for me. Did we at least get it done though? Please say we did. Three star, come on. Yes, come on, hostile work environment. And of course, no more worlds to conquer platinum. Yes, get in. Whew, another one for the collection. Never do I want to do a Vita COD again ever <laughs> and with that being the platinum trophy this brings us to the end of call of duty black ops declassified for the playstation vita and the end of the video so here are my thoughts and this is going to be aimed more at playing on the console itself rather than the game after all if it's call of duty you want i will say there is a lot better call of duties out there but saying that it was surprisingly better than I expected. While it realistically is just another Call of Duty game that's just been downgraded, and I assume a lot of Vita games will be sort of similar in that sense, it's more of how you experience the games that really add to the enjoyment. You have these different touch mechanics, some games utilise the Vita's motion control, some utilise its built-in front and back cameras. It's all genuinely quite cool to see. And adding to that, a lot of games are exclusive to the Vita, so it's opened up a whole other world of gaming for me. I haven't really gamed on a portable device since the days of 3DS and PSP. While I thoroughly enjoyed the experiences they both offered, I always preferred a straight up console or PC. I never owned a Vita and while I knew you could earn trophies, I wasn't personally invested in trophy hunting at the time, so just forgot about it. Since becoming heavily invested in trophy and achievement hunting, I'm always looking for new games and new ways to earn these trophies and achievements. We've got many ways including Xbox, PlayStation, PC, PSVR, which I have covered all of in some way on the channel and now we have the PS Vita but I haven't seen anyone do this before and as there is a huge library of games for the PS Vita that have platinum trophies I thought why is nobody out there covering these games and decided I'd be the guy to bring you that and thought why not give handheld gaming another shot and I'm hoping that this kind of inspires a few more people to pick up a Vita give it a go and earn some trophies it's genuinely a fantastic device and Hopefully we see some more people covering it on YouTube. Yeah, it truly is such an amazing little device considering it fits in one small package. Oh, and of course we can earn trophies, which is a massive dub. Anyway, this does bring us to the end of the video, but it's not the last Vita video you will see. As I said, we are in something I've called Vita Week, and this whole week is dedicated to the PS Vita. So keep your eyes peeled for other videos that I have planned for the rest of the week. And of course, in the future, we will come back and revisit some Vita games as well. But I just wanted a big kind of event, I guess, thing going on um, for the first few uploads. And if this is something that you guys have enjoyed watching and would like to see more of this, then please let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this video around. It shows your support and your support is always appreciated on the channel. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything I upload. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.